Hello and welcome. My name is Julie Friedi and I'm one of the registered dietitians here at Cardiac Rehab. Today we will be discussing sodium for heart health. Please keep in mind these are education sessions specifically designed for individuals in our cardiac rehab program. If you are not part of our program, please check with your healthcare provider for specific advice about your situation. First, let's review our agenda. We will be discussing why we care about sodium, how much we currently consume versus how much we actually need, and finally, ways to apply the information you learned today. So why do we care about sodium in our diet? Well, salt, or more specifically sodium, raises blood pressure, and high blood pressure, or hypertension, increases the risk of heart attack and stroke. Hypertension also increases the risk of chronic kidney disease. If you don't already have high blood pressure, odds are that someday you will. Roughly 80 to 90% of our population eventually go on to develop high blood pressure as they get older. Now let's take a look at how much sodium we actually consume. The average individual consumes upwards of 4,000 milligrams of sodium per day. It's recommended for heart health that we consume less than 2,300 milligrams per day, which is equal to about one teaspoon of table salt. Now 2,300 milligrams is the maximum that we would want you to consume. Most individuals are able to survive on much less, typically 500 to 1,000 milligrams per day. Using that target, most individuals are consuming four to eight times the amount of sodium that they need per day. So where is all this sodium coming from? Probably one of the most common comments I receive from clients is that they feel they're not consuming much sodium because they never use the salt shaker. Now, if you take a look at the slide on the screen, you will notice the smallest portion of sodium that we are consuming is coming from the salt shaker. A total of 11% added during cooking and at the table. The majority of sodium that we consume is coming from processed foods and restaurant meals at about 77%. So removing the salt shaker from your home is a great place to start to help to reduce your sodium intake, but the largest impact will be had by addressing those processed foods and restaurant meals. Let's take a look at how much sodium we add to foods when we process them. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have our unprocessed food. Now the sodium in the majority of these foods is naturally occurring, apart from the cheddar cheese. We will, if we take a closer look at pasta, you can see it has very little sodium, five milligrams per serving. Yet if we add one cup of jarred or canned pasta sauce, that number jumps to 800 milligrams. A similar situation happens with our cucumber. When we turn it into a dill pickle, the sodium content goes from two milligrams to almost 400 milligrams. Fresh salmon naturally contains a small amount of sodium at 56 milligrams per serving. If choosing a canned salmon, that number increases to almost 300 milligrams. Now salmon provides us with valuable omega-3 fats. And if you're interested in learning more about the heart healthy benefits of omega-3 fats, please tune into our fats class. We want you to consume sufficient amounts of omega-3 fats, and canned salmon is a convenient, economical way to obtain this essential fatty acid. Ideally, you would choose a no-salt added canned salmon, which would have a similar sodium content to our fresh, fresh salmon. But if you still have some salted canned salmon in your cupboard, you can make it fit into your diet by reducing other sources of sodium at that meal. For instance, you may choose to have your salted canned salmon on low sodium crackers in place of two slices of highly salted bread. If we move on to our cheese category, you can see we start out by listing the sodium content of block cheese. Now it is a salted product at about 176 milligrams of sodium per one and a half ounces. But you can see the highly processed cheese slices, the ones found in the cellophane wrapper, or cheese in a jar has more than double the amount of sodium than what is found in block cheese. Lastly, 
let's look at our coffee products. One cup of drip coffee with one teaspoon of cream and sugar added provides 15 milligrams of sodium. The majority of the sodium found naturally in the cream. If we compare this to our highly processed powdered cappuccino or hot chocolate mix, we can, say, we can see that they contain drastically more sodium at 250 to 360 milligrams of sodium per serving. Now these are sweet beverages that most individuals would not consider salty. So how much sugar do you think they need to add to a hot chocolate to mask the amount of sodium you would find in a dill pickle? Quite a bit, right? This example shows that even highly processed sweet foods can contain a large amount of sodium. On our nutrition facts table, you will find sodium about two thirds of the way down. First read the serving size, followed by the amount of sodium in the product. Ideally, we would like you to aim for less than, 23, less than 200 milligrams or under 8% sodium per serving. Foods with up to 400 milligrams or 15% can fit on occasion. And typically anything over 400 milligrams or 15% sodium per serving should be left on the grocery store shelf. Our next activity looks at the sodium content of restaurant meals. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have a typical fast food restaurant meal. Chicken burger, french fries with ketchup, and a milkshake. The total amount of sodium in our restaurant meal at 1,990 milligrams is close to our daily maximum target of 2,300 milligrams. Whereas if we made that a meal, whereas if we made a similar meal at home of grilled chicken, baked potato with sour cream, tomato slices and steamed broccoli, along with a glass of milk, our sodium content decreases to 261 milligrams. All the sodium found in the home cooked meal is naturally occurring in the food versus the majority of sodium found in the restaurant meal is added. So does this mean you can never eat out at a restaurant? No but choosing more fresh whole foods from the menu can help to reduce sodium along with minimizing your sodium intake earlier in the day to allow for a small splurge on special occasions when eating out. You may notice some claims on the front of products in relation to sodium. Sodium free indicates the product has less than five milligrams of sodium per serving. No salt added means there is, has been no additional salt or sodium added during processing. You will often find these claims on canned goods such as canned fish or canned vegetables. Lastly, low sodium also indicates a product that would typically fall into a heart healthy diet with those products labeled low, soda, low sodium having less than 140 milligrams per serving. Reduced sodium indicates that a product has at least 25% less sodium when compared with a similar product. Ensure you read the nutrition facts table on products with this claim. Often the original version of these products are very high in sodium and reducing the sodium content by 25% still results in a high sodium product. So what about other salts such as sea salt, kosher salt, or even, or even Himalayan pink salt. Most salts have a similar sodium content as table salt, about 2300 milligrams per teaspoon, and therefore are not a healthier replacement. Unsalted herbs and spices should be used to flavor foods in place of salt. That brings us to the end of our presentation on sodium. A few tips to take with you today, snack on whole foods that are naturally lower in sodium, such as fruits, vegetables, plain yogurt, or nuts and seeds. Try flavoring your foods with real seasonings, such as onion, garlic, celery, and fresh herbs. The fresh variety tends to be more flavorful than the dried variety. And be sure to purchase non-seasoned meat, poultry, fish, and tofu products, as they can have added salt to plump up the weight if labeled as seasoned. Thank you for joining us today. We encourage you to go to our website where you will find additional details on the information provided today, 
as well as a host of other educational videos on a variety of topics for our cardiac rehabilitation patients. If you are a current patient in our cardiac rehab clinic at St. Mary's General Hospital, and you feel you can benefit from a one-on-one -on -one virtual appointment with a dietitian, you can find our contact information on the website and reach out to us to book an appointment. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.